I think the long-term trend in financial markets is towards decentralization and, and distribution. And provided you can regulate them effectively, that, that, that's, a, that's a good thing, I think. Um, it is a kind of democratization of, of capital. Where that will take us, I think, is very hard to tell at this point. But my, my suspicion is it means a sort of resurgence of the notion of, of community. I'm Dave Birch. I'm Director of Innovation at Consult Hyperion, which is a, a UK-based specialist consultancy in the electronic transactions field with offices in New York. Um, our clients are, you know, generally speaking, the larger organizations, the banks and credit card companies and transit operators and the mass market people who want to use new technology to make transactions cheaper, faster, better. So if you take the case of the blockchain, the Bitcoin blockchain, its, it's fundamental raison d'etre is to prevent double spending. So that if, if I send you some bits, you have the bits and I don't, right? So in, in the virtual world, you can replicate bits as many times as you like. But in the blockchain world, you can't. I can't replicate those bits. I send them to you. You've got them. Now I don't have them. That's much more like the real world than the virtual world. You know, in the real world, there's only one of me. There's only one of this chair. If I give you this chair, I don't have it anymore. So in a, in a weird way, the blockchain world is more analogous to the real world than it is to things in the virtual world. And although I don't know what the answer to this is, it does lead me to suspect that there may be some relationship between these kind of burgeoning Internet of Things possibilities and, and what's going on in the world of shared ledgers. Maybe they're connected in some way. What I'm particularly interested in um, is the relationship with regulation because the shared ledger offers a way of running markets, which means that they might have an ambient accountability, that they might have um, regular, you know, instead of having the sort of traditional audit and accounting and so on, you, you can imagine the combination of ledgers and the applications that run on ledgers. I mean, what people, I think, misleadingly call smart contracts. You can imagine this as a new way of operating. And... If it saves a few percent on the operating costs, well, you know, whatever, that's great. It's not the big thing. But if we can, if we can take a third or a half off the cost of regulating markets, then that's a very profound change in the way things work. It, it, it's, it's the regulatory costs, the, the costs that are, that are out of control. So, so my interest in the technology came more from the kind of institutional side of things. I think the cost of, of Know Your Customer, KYC, in London is about $2 billion per annum. And the cost of AML, anti-money laundering compliance of one form or another, is about $5 billion per annum. And those costs are just astronomical. And, and they, they just keep going up and up and up and up. So um, if we want to make better markets, that's a good place to start. But I think it goes a bit further than that because we have markets where in many ways the market participants make money through information asymmetry rather than providing services to that marketplace. And um, if we bring transparency, actually, we, we tend to use the phrase translucent transactions, um, can, you know, translucency, you could, you know, so you can sort of see that there's a, but you may not see all the details of the transaction at uh, one place. Um, the idea that you have this kind of translucency that you construct markets that don't rely on hiding information and, and front running and all this sort of stuff. Um, that's very interesting. And so then you have these kind of more efficient markets and the market participants make money by providing services to those marketplaces. The way that many markets work now is essentially a hack to get around the limitations of old technology. I mean, because we didn't have a network that connected everybody up cost effectively, because we didn't have mobile phones that could authenticate all the participants in a transaction. You know, we didn't have all that stuff. So we come up with hacks, you know, clearing houses and, and, and so on to make things work. So um, how we structure those markets is not in itself a technological decision, but the new technology means that we can come up with different ways of structuring markets. 
you know, we all belong to many kind of over, overlapping communities of one form or another. And I can sort of imagine financial markets that are more suited to the needs of those individual communities, each producing their own kind of um, instruments and assets that we would all use. And that sounds like it would be complicated and confusing. And it, it would be if we were doing this physically with pieces of paper. And I came to Zurich with London money and, and I tried to spend some Facebook dollars and that would all sound crazy. Um, but actually, of course, you wouldn't be doing that. Your, your robo-advisor sitting in your phone would be doing that. And so having portfolios of assets across different communities um, means for, you know, overall more efficiency and markets that are more closely matched to the needs of their communities. The identity problem has been with us since the absolute beginning of the internet. You know, we, we've had the internet for years now and on the internet still nobody knows whether you're a dog or not. Um, you know, identity fraud is completely out of control, data breach. So, you know, the area where we need some new thinking um, is in the sort of identity, in the identity space. And so maybe the technology brings something new into that space. And we need it fairly quickly because we haven't fixed the identity problem for people. But we're about to put 10 billion, trillion, gazillion things on the internet. And if we, if we can't solve the identity problem for a few billion people, I don't know how we're going to solve it for a few trillion things. So we need some new thinking in the identity space. What I really, really want is an effective, and I've always wanted this, is an effective microtransaction solution. You know, this, this idea that you're, you're reading somebody's blog and to read them, you know, you read the first bit and that's pretty, you know, I want to read on. I press the button and they get a dollar or they get 10 cents or they get one cent or something like that. Like if you could just press the button and the person at the other end gets 10 cents, you know, I would like something like that because I think people are talented and interesting. And, and if there was some way of rewarding the production of content without going through those kind of intermediaries, I mean, I know it's a bit sort of hippie-ish, but I've, I've, I've always wanted a microtransaction solution on the web. I used to call it the red button. You know, what if there was a red button on your keyboard that just sent whatever you were browsing, it sent them 10 cents. That's the kind of thing that I want. So if I, if I was to have one pipe dream uh, out, of the, out of the Bitcoin revolution, it would be microtransactions. And maybe Lightning Networks will deliver that, I don't know.